Hello and welcome to another virtual Card and Cuppa with me, Fiona Witten from Oakville Crafts. Hope you're having a good day. Um, first off, apologies, I think there is a bit of a shadow going on here, but um, the problem is my craft room is in the basement. So although I've turned some lights off, if I put them back on again, um, you won't be able to see anything. Um, but anyway, so I'm here live today. I had the virtual, not the virtual, the actual card in a cup of this morning. And we were using or making cards using the um, really cute gnomes. Uh, and I will share that with you in two seconds. Let me just double check that I am live. So bear with me a moment. Oh, it says I'm live. So I'm guess. That means I am. And let's see, double make sure. Yes, I think so. Hopefully there's no lag. Well, there will be a lag, I know that. Yep, okay, right. So, yeah, so today, as I said, um, for, uh, had the card and the cuppa this morning and the kits I took with them, with me, I should, um, simply because uh, we've been having some postal strikes here in the UK, so rather than putting them in the post and things going astray, I thought it would be a lot easier to take them with me, which is what I did. Um, those of you who couldn't make it um, or live a distance away, um, the kids did go in the post. In fact, actually, I know that a couple of you have got them, so that, that's good. Um, but this was the kit that everybody had this morning. And... I'll go through it very briefly and tell you what it is. So we started with a real red card base. Uh, oh, and of course, the obligatory envelope because you can't send the card without the envelope. There was then a panel of real red, which um, I glued on the card front just so that it gave a nice border Hopefully you can see that. Um, but you can put dimensionals on it if you're not posting it and you're not too worried about how how tall it is and having to fit it into the normal first class, then you can add dimensionals. Piece of basic white, which is actually the bit to go on the inside. Um, then there is this really, really cute, and I'm hoping that you can see it, so we have got some really sweet trees. So this is an embossing folder. It's called Whimsical Woodland. So everybody had a panel of that, which the idea is it will go on the front. And then I die cut a house, mushroom toadstool house, and a gnome. So everybody had different colored houses, different coloured gnomes. Um, so the paper comes from, and I will show it to you, the Storybook Gnomes. It's 12 by 12 sheets. And what I did was I sort of cut strips. And so this is what, I don't have much left. So this is what I have left of the um, that paper with the houses on. And... The gnome dies actually cut out the house. So this is one of the, the, the dies. So there are 16 in the pack. Um, and they're designed to, get, just designed to go with the corresponding um, stamp set, which I don't have. But there are also um, dies that will cut out. So this, these more solid ones will cut out different parts of the gnome so you can actually make your own gnome as well um, and then there are people gnomes so there's various ones of those so cut out the the toadstool and then this is all I have left of the paper so again I cut it into sort of strips and then use the dies to cut these out. So there's two different dies. There is one that is designed to cut out the lady gnomes. Um, and you can tell because 
it's got this like little extra sort of piece here if you look against them the tops kind of look the same but halfway down the side there's a little piece that juts out so that's designed to go around the hat and arms because they've got plaits whereas for the gentleman gnomes you're just simply cutting around the outline so there are two two dies for those so I die cut all of those and then obviously also embossed the paper, the cardstock. So we've got the um, the embossed piece here is um, garden green. We then have a little banner, which I'm trying to remember where that came from. You know what? It's kind of nuts. Um, it's another one of uh, another one of the Christmas items. So I'll dig it out in a minute. I just need to find it. So we have like a little stitched banner for label, whatever you want to call it, for sentiment. And then I also added a piece of um, double-sided paper which had trees on because I don't have any trees that would be that would go directly with the with the garden green. So I thought piece of black and white and then people can colour if they want to. Um, so that was the kit. Having said that, the three samples that I took um, were slightly different. So this was the first one that I made. Um, very simple. Glued the piece, the real red piece on, glued the whole of the embossed panel, stamped Happy Christmas in real red. This sentiment is from, and I use all sorts of sentiments because I wanted something that would fit in there. So this Happy Christmas actually comes from the Joyful Flurry stamp set. And I know we're not stamping um, stir flakes, but I just like that sentiment and the way it fitted on there. So I use that and then, um, Rather than the paper, because I'd totally forgotten about that, I have to admit, um, I stamped some Christmas trees, um, except they're not actually Christmas trees. This stamp comes from the Wisteria Wishes stamp set. So I'm just making use of a different of a stamp set and then simply, whoop, lo and behold, turn it upside down, use some green ink and you have trees. Simple as that. So that's what I mean. I could have also overstamped with um, a different color green, a darker one, but actually, I just kind of like that effect, so I've just left it at that. So that was the um, the card, and then the um, mushroom toadstool and the gnome are just added with some um, stamping dimensionals, the foam foam pads trick is not to put the foam pads down the side that is going to overlap the toadstool. Um, so just make sure that they go on the bottom and on the right hand side and then you can glue this, add some glue to this side here just so that it then sticks onto the toadstool. So that was my first card. My second card, I actually turned it so that it was landscape. So this is my second card. Now the piece of garden green that's been embossed measures 10 centimeters across by 14, no actually, sorry, it's nine and a half by 13.9. Um, so I cut the nine and a half. Yes, so it's a nine and a half by um, wide by, go back to this nine and a half by 13.9 but I wanted rather than to have a whole um, section a little border showing I decided that I was just going to trim it so that it fitted directly onto this piece here so I just cut it so that it's nine and a half by ten and glued that onto the side and had the car going uh, landscape and then simply again this time glued the mushroom on, added the gnome using some foam pads, stamped a sentiment. This sentiment comes from 
the Brightest Glow stamp set. So this has been my go-to stamp set this for this year. So we use that. Um, and in fact, we've actually used this quite a few times. So that was that. And then again, the inside was simply um, stamping some trees using the um, Wisteria stamp. And again, onto the envelope. And then last but not least, this is the third card. And remember, uh, it's basically the same kit for all three cards. So the starting point is the same. Um, and my aim is just to show you that you know, you don't have to overcomplicate things. You can use the same supplies and make three totally different cards. So this time I took the embossed piece of garden green and I cut it into three centimeter strips. Doesn't matter which side you work from, either that side or that side, just so it's three, three. And then you'll have, you'll find that there's a tiny slither that you'll cut off this side or that side, depending on where you, you start. So you have three strips, each three centimeters wide, uh, and the length is still the same. Uh, that hasn't changed. But uh, a word of warning, if you are cutting some embossed cardstock, be very, very careful what you use to um, then cut it down. Because uh, it's, although you could, you could cut the strips and then try and get them together in your embossing folder. Um, and you can do that by just using some washi tape or something to uh, hold them together. Um, because I had to give everybody a whole panel um, which they could then decide which sort of card they wanted to make. Um, obviously, I couldn't pre-cut it. So uh, if you just use a normal a trimmer which has a blade, you will find sometimes that it will drag on the raised embossed parts and it won't look very nice. So you'll need to use a little guillotine or a big guillotine, depending on what you have. And this is one that I had that was um, part of a, a joining offer a while back. So that's what I took with me this morning and it made it a lot easier for people to um, cut both the three strips and also this piece here. So yeah, so just be careful how you, if you do decide to cut it, um, then actually if, if you're doing this yourself at home and you're starting from scratch, then you can just cut your three strips and then on the reverse side, stick them together with some washi tape and then emboss them and you don't have the issue. Uh, we, I also cut the mushroom toadstool in half, well, not, not quite in half. As you can see, the, the door is um, slightly over to one side. So I cut that and then I used what was left to decorate the inside of the card. So this is glued on. The gnome has some dimensionals on. These are just straightforward glued on. Hopefully you can now see the embossing. Um, the trick I found was to start with the two outer ones because then you can make sure that you have an equal border top, bottom and to the side, the, to the outside. And then it's just easier just to then add that middle one. And then you also want to make sure that you're not muddling that and that your pattern does actually continue across. If you don't mind not an issue but i kind of quite like it going across and then again sentiment this one came from again the uh joyful flurry stamp set so it's a season of magic and wonder and i think that actually is quite fitting for the for the gnomes so those were the three cards that i used i'm just going to quickly show you because i haven't showed you it the embossing folder so the embossing folder is actually quite a large one. It's uh, six by six. And it's a, as it said, it's a 3D embossing folder. So you just need to be careful what sandwich that you actually use. Um, but it looks like this. So all my pieces, um, I had to put them in sideways. And then because, of course, when you're embossing, you always want to make sure that your hinge goes into the machine first. Um, the reason for that is that this is the strongest part. If you put it in last, 
you you run the risk of this um, sort of tearing and then you'll find that it doesn't actually the um, both sides don't match up properly and you won't get a very good um, embossed image so that's the embossing folder and I guess and I should say that both the paper, the dies, you'll find the paper on page 43 of the um, mini catalogue, along with the dies. Uh, the stamp set is there too. As I said, I didn't actually get it, um, but it's very cute. And one of the other dies actually then um, cuts out. Actually, I think two of them cut out, this one and this one. Um, and then, and, and the paper is there too. So that's on page 43. And then you will find the embossing folder on page 39. So you can see here, because um, this is what I'm going to give a go this morning, this afternoon. So I'm going to, to do this effect and hope it comes out. Um, so you can see here, see it far clearer because it, they've used um, craft a white craft ink pad on that so without further ado I'm going to grab my kit so starting off again as I said we have envelope which I don't need just yet and actually I don't actually need my base card either so that can go to one side I've got my piece of real red and I've got my embossed piece of garden green now I'm going to do the um, use the craft ink pad first so when you get this it's not ink so it comes with a little bottle and you then ink it up yourself this is the old style so you will get a slightly different one let's see if I can find my catalog quickly it's always I put it to one side uh, but this technique is pretty simple in that what you're going to do is you're going to drag the um, ink ink pad over the embossed portion. You don't need to go too heavy with it. Um, so it just needs a light touch because you can always, whoops, always go back and add some. And you will get different thicknesses of it. Sometimes you don't need too much. I'm going to just leave it like that. I'm not going to go too mad with this. Um, you can take a tissue to sort of wipe off any excess. But I'm just going to leave it like that for the time being. And put it to one side to dry. Um, the, other, the other idea is you can take your um, heat tool and just give it a quick blast with that. So I've then got my... Um, my piece of double-sided paper. Now I could use the green. I'm not overly keen. It's not quite the right green. So that's which is why I went for the black and white. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my garden green ink pad, which I've already squeezed. So for those of you who don't know this technique, if you have your ink pad closed and take the top firmly in your hand and squeeze it you will then find that ink transfers over to the bottom um, and which is what you want and you can then pick up that ink to to color so you can either use um, aqua painters or blending pens or wink of stella which is what i'm going to do uh, and then all you want to do is make sure that there is some wink of Stella in the barrel here. Oh, don't tell me this one's nearly finished. There's a little bit there. And then you're just going to pick up a little bit. Um, it's one of these things that it goes a long way. Um, so obviously when you first put it down, it'll be quite dark. And then you can move it around. And you're going to colour the images. So that will then give them a little bit of a shine. Shall I just do this? Obviously, I'm not going to do the star because I don't really want that to be green. 
um, I could find a, a Daffodil Delight or a So Saffron ink pad and do those as uh, yellow. So I'm just going to quickly colour all of these trees. And so just pick up a little bit of a at a time because you can always go back over, but what you can't do is you can't take it off. So like so. And the question is, do I do that last one, which is a bit of a, a different style? Let's see. Mm, actually, I don't really need it to be too dark. This one we can just go lightly and do it like brush strokes rather than um, solid colour. And then simulate this bit as well. Okay, so oops, I think I might do that one there and that bit there. I think I'm happy with that. To clean your Winker Stella brush, you just simply need to brush it on your on a piece of scratch paper or grid pad, whatever it is. And then you're good to go if you want to pick up a different colour, uh, which is what I'm not going to do, so I'm just going to put that away. So I'll put that to one side. So I've now got my piece of coloured paper. It's a little bit too long. Um, as I said many times before, I like to um, cut things a little bit too long when it comes to doing the inside, um, simply because it's a lot easier to trim it than it is to try and stick an extra bit on. And then we're gonna get some wet glue. So I've got the Tombow. And I'm just literally going to stick it to, actually I'm gonna go up a bit, I think. Oops, sorry, I think I might have just hit the phone with my head. Like that, let's turn it over so that I don't smear it with my fingers, making sure that it's glued. Find a pair of paper snips, take off the excess, like so. I don't need those bits, those can get thrown away in a minute. So it's November, I can't believe that it's November, it's kind of crazy. Um, my life at the moment is just complete, I don't know where I'm coming or going. Well, we, um, my daughter has a house that was bought in, I'm trying to think now, July. And finally, I've got to the point where all the work's been done on it. It needs a new kitchen, bathroom, all sorts of things. And um, sadly, um, we've uncovered quite a few things that need to be put right before um, she can actually move in. So I'm kind of project managing that while she's working. Not that I'm not working, because I, you know, I'm at the end of the day, Oakfield Crafts is a business. Um, I know people think, oh, it's not really that serious, but it's my business. It's what I like to do. It keeps me busy. So here's my um, piece of garden green that I've um, embossed, and then I've used my white um craft ink pad let's see it looks like it's pretty much there's a few bits i think that aren't quite dry so i'm just going to glue that on and then i'm going to leave it again for a minute or two like so Again, I'm going to turn it upside down so that if there is anything that's wet, it's going to just basically go onto my grid paper. But it looks like it's okay. So that can go on there. Now I have my... So I've got these. And then I have my sentiment to stamp. And 
I do have it. So I've got the It's a Season of Magic and Wonder. So I'm using that again. So as I said, that's from the Joyful Flurry stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it in real red, I think. Because I kind of want it to stand out a bit more than, uh, than the garden green. Ooh. I can see Merry Christmas on there. I don't know what went on there this morning, but oh well. So when I put this on my block, I actually lined my block up with my grid paper. And then because the this is clear, you can line up a line, straight line as well. So in theory, but I actually need to put it where I can actually see it. That's the only problem. And hopefully you can still see it. So I need to just make sure that my uh, block is kind of lined up straight. I can't see because my head's in the way and the phone's in the way. So hopefully this is okay. Oh, yep, yeah, that works. Put that to one side, close this so that I don't end up putting the card in it. Right, so $64 million question is where are we going to pull this? Uh, so we're going to play, I obviously didn't die cut that one very well, so I'm just going to quickly um, use my paper snips to fussy cut around it so that I don't have quite such a large um, border on that side. So that's that. Yep, so November, yeah. Can't believe that, so. I've had card and a cuppa uh, this morning. We did Christmas cards, as you as you can see, because that's what we're doing now. Uh, I've done my Christmas stamper stack, so hopefully those who've been coming regularly to things kind of in a good place when it comes to Christmas cards. I know I usually end up having to do a few more because um, when it comes to the stamper stack, I only make one of each card because I don't need to be sitting there making 20 on the day I'm there to help I design them. So, right. I think that's how I'm going to put it together. So I'm going to glue, I think I'm going to glue this on here now, onto the card front. So just a little bit around the edge and a squiggle in the middle. It is more than enough to, to hold it. I'm going to put that on here. Like so. Again, turn it over just to make sure it won't be like that. I'm going to put some glue on my toadstool mushroom house. Now, I don't want to go too high thinking about it because I actually want to put that up there. So let's just move that down a bit so that can go there. I'm going to put her here. You can tell it's a her because she's got plaits. And that one I'm going to add with some dimensionals. Got a fresh sheet just out of the packet. In fact, I'm going to use those three. And then I'm going to use a couple of minis just to make sure that her Her hat is fastened down like that and put one on the body there as well, I think. Peel these off. Like so. Oops, I've forgotten that wasn't fit, fit into, fit, fitted, fixed down yet. So I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals as well. I'm just going to put three on there. Like so. Should get rid of that. I don't need that. That's going to 
going to go on. Actually, I'm going to overlap that slightly over the, the house. Now I'm going to use my uh, Wink of Stella again. I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this on uh, these white patches or lighter patches. They're not quite white. They're sort of a pale off blue and maybe on the windows just to give it a little bit of a shine and that one um, that's that and then really other than adding some embellishments I'm pretty much done so I took some rhinestones with me this morning which I did have out there they are so we can add some rhinestones. A little bit of fun. So I'm going to put a rhinestone. And I've got the take your pick tool just to make it easy. And I'm going to add a little rhinestone on the tip of her hat. And then I think I might add a few more in other places. So you can add them where you obviously you wish. Go mad with this or one, two, three. Uh, stick one up here, I think. There we go. So that is my is my um, card from today. So what I what I did was I started off with my garden green embossed piece and then I ran uh, the white craft ink pad over it just sort of pulled it over you don't need to go too heavy um, I don't have a problem with the fact that I don't actually have every single bit covered or the fact that some of it is darker than the other um, you can of course obviously run it backwards and forwards as many times as you like um, but I'm a firm believer of less is more, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, added my mushroom house, added my little gnome uh, sentiment and some rhinestones. And then on inside, I used uh, basic green, basic green, garden green ink and my Wink Stella pen. And I coloured um, some of the trees that were on the um, strip of double sided paper that was included in the kit. So that is my fourth card. Um, hope you've enjoyed seeing that. Um, yesterday was 1st of November, which meant that the Fitting Florets um, collection is now available. I had planned or was thinking about doing a um, stamping and creating with them next week, but um, I'm actually going to, to a Stampin' Up! event next Wednesday and I will be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday and I'm going to Vienna. So this is going to be our first um, get together in three years. Um, so Stamping Up, um, Stamping Up have this event called um, On Stage and every demonstrator can go to it. Um, you just have to be able to get there. And each market has, takes it in turn to actually host. So it's the turn of um, Europe and um, they chose Vienna to host this year's. Uh, and then I think next year it will be in South Pacific and then we'll head, they'll head to um, the States again. And the States is always, uh, well, not always, uh, predominantly in Utah, which is stamp where Stampin' Up! is based. Um, although we've been to Florida a few times as well. So exciting times next week. Um, following week will be Card and a Cuppa. And then I will do... Um, so I might actually do a stamping and creating, but I'll pre-record it so that you still get to see things next week. Um, it just depends on how much time I have between doing all this, getting ready for on stage, and also my daughter's house. So anyway, I digress. So these are the four cards. So 
These three are the ones that I took to Cardinal Cupper this morning, and then this is the one that I have just made. I uh, hope you've enjoyed seeing that, and um, I'm going to love you and leave you now, and I will catch up with you again very soon. Take care. Bye.